The third thing are the lentigenes. Now, lentigenes, they are similar to uh, epilites, but they are uh, slightly larger in size as compared to them. They do not occur in photo-exposed parts, so they are unrelated to sun exposure and they are relatively well-defined. So, what are the features about lentigenes that you need to remember? First of all, look at this picture. Lentigenes, they are much smaller as compared to cafe lem acutes, right? They are slightly larger or same size as epilites, but unlike epilites, they are present all over the body. So, lentigenes, they are in the form of small, in bracket you would write around 3 to 5 mm is their size, brown macular lesions, macules, non-palpable, which are sharply demarcated, that is well defined and present anywhere on the body. They are not only restricted to photo exposed parts. In fact, they are very commonly seen on the trunk. So, they are present anywhere on the body. They are not related to photo exposure or ultraviolet exposure. Sunlight se relation nahi hai. Other than that, the important point about lentigenes is the histological pattern. On histology, you will find that there is increase in the number of melanocytes and there is club-shaped thickening of epidermal rete ridges. This feature is considered to be the histological hallmark of lentigenes. Nobody is going to put a histology picture here. We are not discussing dermatology. We are discussing pediatric aspects of dermatology. So, I am not showing you pictures so as to overwhelm you with uh, too much of information. End of the day, we need to crack the super specialty exam. We are not going to do a PhD in these topics. But uh, where possible, where needed, I will be showing you uh, pictures according to what we need. So, these are we call as lentigenes. So, lentigenes, there are a lot of syndromes which are associated with lentigenes. So, what are the common conditions? First of all, we have a condition called as lentigenosis profusa. The name itself is saying there are profuse. So, there are multiple extensive lentigenes present all over the body, but there is no mucosal involvement. So, oral mucosa will never be involved. It is not a syndromic condition, it is just that multiple profuse lentigenes when they are present, we call them as lentigenosis profusa. Second is LAMB syndrome, which on which MCQ has already been asked in super speciality exam in the past. So, LAMB syndrome also called as Carney complex, let us briefly discuss this condition. So, it involves gene mutations in the gene PRKAR1 gene mutation. So, PRKAR1 gene mutation, this gene is present on long arm of chromosome 17. LAMP syndrome, if you look at the uh, individual component, L stands for lentigenes of the face and in case of females, it also occurs on the vulva. Secondly, A stands for atrial myxoma. It is strongly associated with myxomas, which are the most common benign tumors of heart in adults. They are less common in children. Third, but as a part of Carney complex, they do occur in adolescents as well. M stands for mucocutaneous myxoma. So, these myxomas, myxomatous benign tumors can also occur on the oral cavity as well as on the skin. And B stands for blue nevi. So, multiple hyperpigmented blue colored nevus may be present in these children. Often, they have associated endocrine disorders like ACTH independent Cushing syndrome, and there is an increased risk of developing malignancies like Sertoli cell cancer of testis. So, testicular cancers, CONSA, Sertoli cell cancer in males is frequently common. So, these are points which I have discussed. They are taken from Nelson, various chapters of Nelson and I have combined and put at one place. Very important can be a potential MCQ. Another common condition which is associated with lentigenes is the so-called Leopard syndrome. That word Leopard syndrome has now been discarded. We prefer the term uh, Noonan syndrome with multiple lentigenes because it is frequently strongly associated with Noonan syndrome. So, 
there is type 1 which is the common variety there is ptpn11 gene mutation remember that this is the variety what we also uh, ptpn11 is also mutated in noonan syndrome and type 2 is due to raf2 gene mutation this variety the common variety is also called as so one name of leopard syndrome is noonan syndrome with multiple lentigenes this is the most common uh, this is the currently followed name so uh, what does the term leopard stands for l stands for lentigenes right e stands for various ecg abnormalities o stands for ocular hypertelorism increased gap between the medial canthi of the two eyes p stands for pulmonary stenosis you already know that pulmonary stenosis is the most common congenital heart disease in noonan syndrome a stands for abnormal genitalia lots of abnormal genitalia findings are seen in leopard syndrome which include hypogonadism in case of males cryptorchidism etc then r stands for retardation of growth so short stature can be seen and d stands for deafness the type of deafness seen in these children is sensory neural hearing loss so these are the conditions which are associated with lentigenes and finally we have a syndrome called as peutz jeger syndrome which also has some features of lentigenes the important thing about peutz jeger syndrome is this is the only syndrome where lentigenes show strong mucosal involvement oral mucosa is frequently affected other varieties no mucosal involvement or very rare mucosal involvement is seen all of them are autosomal dominant conditions whatever we have discussed so far in lentigenes syndrome leopard syndrome and uh, carney complex syndrome and peutz jeger syndrome remember that it is also autosomal dominant condition the gene mutation is stk11 gene mutation what is the hallmark the hallmark is this can you see that the lips are very frequently affected multiple lentigenes are present on the oral mucosa they can be seen around the lip also they can be present on the hands and feet also but perioral pigmentation and inside the oral cavity also buccal mucosa tongue gums you can find pigmentation so write down the key point here hallmark of peutz jeger syndrome is lentigenes on the oral mucosa lentigenes on oral mucosa what are the key features about this syndrome that you need to remember what are the key features of peutz jeger syndrome that you need to remember first of all they have increased risk of developing lentigenes lentigenes are frequently present in the oral cavity in the lips and in the perioral region they can also be present on hands and feet the second feature of peutz jeger syndrome they have a high risk of developing polyps the polyps tend to occur most commonly in the small intestine sometimes they can also occur in stomach and they can occur in colon as well in small intestine the most common site are jejunum followed by ileum these polyps can produce problems these polyps can produce features like abdominal pain they can produce bleeding and polyps can sometimes act as a focal point around which intersusception develops so intersusception can sometimes develop due to underlying polyp and the third feature of peutz jeger syndrome is increased risk of malignancies the malignancies which are seen in them they can be both the git malignancies as well as the non git malignancies the git malignancies are commonly in the form of colorectal cancer it can also occur in the form of rarely other tumors like small intestinal lymphomas or small intestinal cancers stomach cancers and anal cavity or anal region stomach uh, anal region cancers can also develop but colorectal cancers are 
relatively common compared to the other sites. And non-GI conditions, it tends to cause uh, tumors involving the genital area or the conats. So, testicular cancers are common, ovarian cancers are common and sometimes epididymis can have benign or malignant tumors which is obviously rarer as compared to testicular and ovarian cancers. So, these are the key features related to Peutz Jagger syndrome that you need to remember. So, uh, any patient of multiple antigens on the oral cavity, you need to evaluate for the polyps as well as screen for malignancies in these children. So, this finishes our important hyperpigmentation disorders.